On May 1st, 2005, the fishermen of Hot Cry Village in northern Thailand were out on the river before dawn. It was the one time of year to catch the Mekong giant catfish, a fish that Thais call bla book, or buffalo fish. Among Thai fishermen, no fish inspires more folk tales, and the villagers of Hot Cry have been telling stories about bla book for centuries. These fishermen had watched their father, they'd grown up watching their fathers pull dozens of Mekong giant catfish out of the river every year. And they themselves had caught some. But it had been three years since anyone, anywhere in Thailand, had caught a wild Mekong giant catfish. And it was clear that their numbers were declining dramatically. Some people questioned whether or not there were any blah book left to catch. Together, the men ventured out onto the muddy waters of the Mekong, unfurling their long nets across the river. They'd been out on the water for less than 15 minutes when the great fish announced itself with four whacks of its tail. The fishermen knew immediately what had tangled in their net. It was a blah book. No other fish grew as big, and this one was enormous. It took the fishermen over an hour to pull the fish to shore. And by then, the fish had lost its brute force, its brute strength that it exhibited out on the river. When one of the men thread a thick rope through the fish's mouth and gills, the toothless giant, bruised and exhausted, put up little resistance. It took eight men to lift the fish out of the water to measure and weigh it. The fish measured nine feet in length, and it weighed 646 pounds. The fishermen didn't know it at the time, but they had just broken the record for the largest freshwater fish in the world. Or had they? At the time, I was working in the Mekong Basin. I was doing research that I'd started as part of my PhD. And media around the world reported on this 646-pound catch. But no one was reporting of anyone ever catching a larger fish. So the catch made me curious. I asked myself, what is the world's largest freshwater fish? We know that the African elephant is the world's largest terrestrial animal, that the blue whale is the largest creature in the sea, that the whale shark is the largest marine fish. But as I started digging, I realized that no one had ever looked at giant freshwater fish on a global scale. And it was because of this curiosity and my inability to find answers that I started the search for the world's largest freshwater fish together with the National Geographic Society and the University of Nevada, Reno, it's become a 10-year-plus scientific adventure to six continents to find, study, and protect the world's largest freshwater fish. And it's been an adventure that stretched across the globe, from some of the most remote places on Earth to our own backyards. And it's also become a race against the clock to try to find and protect these giant fish before they disappear forever. What I found has been amazing, more incredible than I ever imagined. Beneath the surface of the world's rivers and lakes swim dozens of species of mysterious aquatic giants. These are the real-life Loch Ness monsters of the freshwater world. There are about 30 species of what I call megafish, freshwater fish that grow to over six feet length or weigh more than 200 pounds. And it's a diverse assemblage of unknown, poorly understood creatures, like the giant Siamese carp. This is a fish of 600 pound relative of the goldfish that has <laughs> scales that are the size of the palm of my hand. Or the giant freshwater stingray, a stingray in fresh water that can grow to 15 feet in length and has a, ven a venomous barb 
on the base of its tail that's as long as my forearm. There are two other species of freshwater ray that grow almost as big. And one species in northern Australia was only described in 2008. So these are enormous creatures that, that play important roles in aquatic environments. Yet their numbers are dwindling, threatened by overfishing and habitat loss, pollution, climate change. Over 70% of these giant fish are now at risk of extinction. So why are these fish, like this giant goonch catfish in India, why are these fish disappearing? And honestly, why should we care? Well, these, the big fish, often these big fish face the biggest threats. Uh, they're the first to be affected by overfishing, by dams, uh, by pollution a lot of times. And so they're indicators, these big fish are indicators of river health. And it's not just big fish, it's small fish too, it's all fish. The troubled story of these large fish underscores an environmental crisis that's facing our lakes and rivers today, where the rate of biodiversity loss, freshwater biodiversity loss, is greater than the biodiversity loss that we see in the oceans or on land. And it's not just fish, it's people too. You take the Mekong River as one example. The Mekong River is the most productive river on Earth. Over two million tons of fish are harvested from the Mekong River every year. And as the big fish disappear from the Mekong, it's an indication that the overall harvest is at risk as well. And that, in turn, threatens the livelihoods and food security of millions of people living along, along the Mekong River. These fish are culturally important. Giant Siamese carp, giant seven-stripe barb, giant catfish are carved into the walls of the ancient Angkor Wat temples in Cambodia. These are fish that are so significant that they play central roles in religion and ceremony. These extraordinary animals, they have the, they, they have the ability to change the way that we view the world. I, I remember the first time I saw one of these fish, and I hope some of you are feeling the same way right now. The first time I saw one of these fish, something inside me shifted, and my world became a bigger place. It became a better place. So what can we do to save these amazing animals? Well, first, I think we have to acknowledge that they have an image problem. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> So, first, I, I think we have to acknowledge that they have an image problem. Uh, we tend to think, or we tend to dismiss these fish as ugly. Let's be honest, we tend to dismiss these fish as ugly, or think of them as food, or fear them as dangerous. But they're much more than that. They are found in many of the world's great rivers. In the Mississippi, in the Amazon, the Yangtze, the Nile, the Colorado. Like us, they need clean water to survive. They clearly illustrate threats to aquatic systems, and they can be used to show the link between river health and human health. We need to change the way that we think about freshwater fish. As sharks have shown over the last 40 years, it is possible to change lack of awareness and even fear to, to appreciation and respect. You think about, for those of you that were around, think about how we thought about sharks when the movie Jaws came out. <laughs> and now, 40 years later, thanks to the work of thousands of people around the world, people's perceptions of sharks has, cha has changed. And three of the largest shark species, including the great white, are now globally protected. And part of, an important part of this is education and outreach. This is a photo of Cambodian children reading a book about the ecology and conservation of Mekong giant catfish. Ten years ago, when I was just starting this work, I would talk to people or show people photos of these fish, and people hadn't heard of them. Today, when I speak to students, even young children, a lot of them can name these fish. 
And we need to come together. These fish, they don't have many friends. They need more friends. And so we need to come together, form partnerships, and especially engagement with fishermen. Those can be important conservation tools. You take what, an example of this is what's happened in Alaska, where fishermen, local business, businesses, and environmental groups have come together to protect Bristol Bay, which is home to the largest, one of the largest populations of salmon on Earth. Or what's happening in Mongolia, where scientists, religious leaders, and fishermen have come together to take the lead in protecting the world's largest trout species. And then finally, we need action, direct action to help protect aquatic habitats, help either maintain or restore free-flowing rivers, and help save these iconic yet critically endangered megafish. If you Google dam removal, you can see an example of one of the kinds of actions that's being adopted more and more frequently recently to help protect these rivers and fish. I was back in the Mekong late last year, and I witnessed firsthand people coming together to try to create a world where mega fish and humans can coexist. While Cambodians were celebrating Independence Day, a group of fishermen outside of Phnom Penh made a very special catch. They caught the first Mekong giant catfish of 2015. And that's evidence that this extremely rare fish still occurs in Cambodia, and it's still making its annual spawning migration in the free-flowing stretches of the Mekong. We tagged and released this fish alive downstream of the fishermen's nets as part of a partnership between the fishermen, the Cambodian Department of Fisheries, and scientists. To release the fish, I dove into the water with it and I, to try to guide the big fish down into deeper water. And about 15 feet below the surface, my ears popped, it was silent, it was dark, and I'd reached the point where my world ended and the world of that fish began. In the end, I've learned that the search for the world's largest freshwater fish is about far more than finding the big one. It's the story of the health of our rivers and lakes. It's the story of people who depend on fish and fresh water to survive. And it's the story of how we perceive our world and how the existence of these amazing fish makes our, life ri makes our lives richer and Earth a better home, not just for us, but for all life, big and small. Thank you very much.